Hi, <clears throat> welcome to the second video of the mini hacking computer. Now, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say that if you got so far and you bought Raspberry Pi and you did already what I asked you to do, you know, depending on which kind of Raspberry Pi you got, there are different kind of steps you can go through in order to get it done. Now, in my particular case, I had to buy an external, you know, Ethernet cable to connect to Raspberry Pi and they're connected to my access point in order to get an IP address. So what I really show here is uh, me uh, logging into my um, uh, what you call the the Wi-Fi uh, access point through the admin panel. You see, I'm logged in as admin. I apologize, this isn't Danish, but I just didn't really care too much about it. I I, I just gonna give you a general impression that you're gonna log into your Wi-Fi adapter. And depending on which one you have, the interface will be different from mine. But you get an overview of different kind of connected units, and you're going to see one of them is called Kali, Raspberry, whatever. And you see the IP address is local, and you see the port doesn't really matter, and it says Raspberry Pi Foundation. That is the IP address you're going to take note of. Now you can SSH directly into it. What I really did, let me just show you exactly what I did so you can picture it in your head is that I, I have this uh, access point here. So this is my my Wi-Fi AP. Let me just create this a big bit here. Uh, let me see, 22, too small, still 26, really good. And what I'm gonna have is my Raspberry Pi right there. So that, that is my, uh, was my Pi. So what I really did is I took my ethernet cable and connect it directly into my uh, access point right there. This is the RJ45, uh, so let me just write that. The RJ45 connector cables, RJ45. And it doesn't really matter, but this is this is CAT, uh, CAT 6A, I think it was. It doesn't really matter if it's CAT 5, whatever, it's just a matter of the, the speed can go through. It doesn't really, I don't think I need all the speed, but you know, just the way it is. What I also connected to my, uh, through USB, so that is another U connection I have here, is my um, Alpha card that I bought on Amazon. Let me just draw you that as well. That is the Alpha card, and the Alpha card do have this antenna right there. And I'm just gonna write you the connection that doesn't really matter too much, but that's an alpha card from so just alpha. Black, go. That is the connection I have so far. Now, because I am connected, and this is the thing, I'm connected on Ethernet as well to my Wi Fi adapter, so it makes this connection a lot more easy. I have also connected. Um, my Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, my my Pi to the to Ethernet, and what I can do now is going to take the IP address that I just showed you, the one right there. It's called 192.168.0.158. It's going to be different from yours, of course. I can open up my my Git Bash. This is the Git Bash. I'm going to create this big, small, uh, larger for you guys, so you can really see it. And then I will SSH into my Linux KDE. Now I already did this once, so it's gonna ask you to, you know, say type yes in order to save the fingerprint and so on. So just write Kaylee because the default credentials is Kaylee Kaylee to default uh, to Linux Kaylee. As you can see, I'm now logged in to my uh, Debian Kaylee um, ARM v version seven, and you can see that I'm logged in as Kaylee, and I have different kind of, you know, all the different, you know the same access I usually would have. So now we can make this large and see now we have a screen now. So you can go ahead and clear it and type your commands and go to um, to home and do all these kind of things that you normally would do on a machine. And you can, everything you can, you can see like that. So now that we have that sorted out, what you would probably need to do is go ahead and type if config uh, depending on uh, where you are, of course. What you see here is that I have my um, Ethernet right there, and this is the connection cable connection, and then I have my VLAN zero 
mon because I already put it into monitor mode. Now, all these kind of things I, it should be in a different video, but I, if you just want to show you that I connected to it, what I really did is I, I really went ahead and typed, you know, uh, start, and also you had to do like check kill and all these kind of things in order to start the processes. Now, now you are able, and I didn't really have to do anything. You just have to plug in the alpha card. And because the alpha card is known software for Linux KD, in this particular case, in my case, I, I wouldn't have to install anything. That, that could differ from your case, depending on which kind of hardware you plug into your Raspberry Pi. Now, that of course, I cannot cover. I can only tell you to, to try and buy something with standard drivers because that's gonna be easier for you. So you could probably go ahead and research which kind of Wi-Fi adapters uh, with monitor mode, promiscuous mode, is supported by default by default drivers on Linux Kali, you know, something like that. And if you're unsure about that, you know, different kind of, you know, place in the internet, you can go and ask. I have no idea what they're called. I'm just telling you it's a different way to do it. Now that this is done, we can go ahead and start all different kind of sniffing, you know, uh, things we could do. I could type sudo aerodom vlan zero. And if I present it now, it will start to sniff the different kind of Wi-Fi adapters and packages and stuff that is connected to, um, you can see in the top here, I'm, I'm gonna blur it out of course, so, but you can see in the top that I have the BSSIDs, the auth and the ESSID, and you can also see the BSSIDs and the probes, and of course the stations that are connected directly to different kind of, you know, uh, ESSIDs. The ESSID is, is, is the actual name for the BSSID. I know it's probably a lot of SSI, BSI, ESI. I'm sorry for that, but the, the actual Wi Fi name you see on your tablet and your phone is called the ESSID, and the actual BSSID is going to be the MAC address. And the MAC address is also shown down below here in a list called the BSSID, and the BSSID is the the uh, <laughs> the access point that is, that that are having hosts which are called station, and then you can see which are connected. Some of them are not associated, and cannot show that because I blurred it out in order to protect privacy of other people. But I can see that you know I have a lot of different kind of you know connections going on, and this is what the Raspberry Pi will do. You have your own portable hacking device now. I'm gonna stop this and go ahead and type clear. I also have all my my, my typical nmap tools. I can go ahead and run uh, nmap on whatever you know and and press enter. I have all the different kind of tools. I can prove that by typing which nmap, and you can see that nmap is installed. All the software you need is installed now. Obviously, this is a, a terminal-based connection. I don't have any graphical user interface. I don't need that. So what I need now is to create a script or something like that to automate the general idea of you know doing the the ethical hacking exercise that I'm talking about. So what I'm really talking about is I I one pitch the idea, and this this could also be done on the phone, on an Android phone, and you install Termux as a, a Termux or how it, this app called Termux. On your Android phone, and then you could go ahead and and uh, install Linux Kali, NetHunter, I think it's called. Yeah, it is. And depending on which kind of phone you have, you would need an extender, and in order to connect your other Wi-Fi adapter that can go into monitor mode in order to sniff Wi-Fi packets and so on. But if your phone is not rooted and hasn't, I have actually had an issue with that. Then I decided to do just a Raspberry Pi, but it's easier. And since the um, the Raspberry Pi is just a native installation of, of Linux Kali, I basically can just stick to that. What I could different what I could do now is just to go inside any Linux Kali installation and say which kind of tool do I have. So now I can plug and play this. I don't know if it's gonna be the same IP address I have every time I connect it to my Wi-Fi adapter. It doesn't really matter because what I'm gonna do is gonna configure it in a way so I can bring it with me with my battery hat, as I talked about earlier, this is still the same battery hat. And then I can do no battery on, of course, right now. It's in a separate bag right here. <laughs> but then, you know, we can just go ahead and, and take with me and record Wi Fi traffic. And the Raspberry Pi will fit in the pocket. It will fit in any kind of, you know, uh, bag you could probably bring. So it's going to be quite easy for you to, to, to fit it. Anywhere you have it in either, you know, a jacket, I wouldn't recommend that, but it's possible. You can create a small box for it. You can 
insulate that box in different kind of ways. Just make sure to verify the fact that the Raspberry Pi, so the, the newer the version, the more heat we can generate. You might need a heat sink for it. But now that we have this, you know, you can basically anything you would like, you know, the IP address you can see here, it's running. Now, when I, I go ahead and shut this down, it will be dead and that's it. So you can now, now you have your own mini hacking computer and you do different, different kind of things with it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some Wi-Fi. I'm gonna uh, create some Wi-Fi hacking, sniffing, something like that uh, tool with this. Um, so I'm gonna create some you know scripts and so. And that, that's gonna be the next video where I showcase uh, how I'm gonna do this and, and, and it's gonna take some time for me to research it. But I'm gonna show anything, everything I will do and explain what I do. So now that we're done with this and we SSH directly into the Raspberry Pi, we're ready to use it. And it is that simple, that simple. SSH into it on a pre-configured Linux Kali from the first video I already recorded. You can just go ahead and check out the video in the playlist. In the very first video, this is the second video. In the very first video, I show you everything there is need to know how I set up the Raspberry Pi and how you can do it and which kind of hardware you need. And everything is there for you. So just want to say, really hope you learned something for this video. If you liked it, you learned something, please consider subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment below, ask any questions, I'm going to beg back. If you have anything you would like me to test, some ideas, please all let me know, I will look into it. See you again online.